Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading webinar. If you're here to look at uh, learning the trading the uh, futures markets using the Viper tools, we are in the right place. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures of Forex does involve risk. There is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And of course, everybody here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, let's get straight away over here to a uh, 6J chart. Um, we're going to mix this up a little bit tonight. We're going to um, uh, collectively look as a team. We've done this for the past... Uh, I don't know, three or four or five Thursday evenings where we all sort of look at things as a team. Let's make sure that I am in sim. We look at, uh, we take votes on potential trade setups on various markets. How many of you want to go ahead and buy a break, a pop? Now, technically speaking, I'm going to go ahead and put a put a buy order in here. I'm going to, oops, why did I do that? <laughs> Just in case it pops on us, I want to get into now, okay, I'm just kind of jumping right in here because I, I want to, if there are trade setups, I want to make sure we we can catch them. This is 6J, the Japanese yen futures. Now, technically, I see Mindy is saying no. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, we have a couple of options here. Now, the background is red. So, uh, you know, technically speaking, you know, if this is going to be a trend change, since the Asian market is just opening, uh, we might get a pop-up into here. Now, if you'd box this and let it go either way, technically speaking, at this box at the mid-band right here, you would already be long on one of these bars right here. Now, uh, you could make the case that with the background being red, that this could, in fact, be a short. Pervez saying, I have struggled with BOES. Is that entries? Hesitating fear coming back after breaks. The BOW, what is the stop on a box this morning? I hesitated on CL when it went to the moon. Boxes. Okay, Pervez, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. In fact, we'll go back. Uh, I just want to get a couple of uh, trades on the board so we have something to watch all together as a team here. But I'll, I'll circle back on crude oil and take a look at that for you. Definitely. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves, well, you know, Charles, I'll tell you, I'm looking at this chart here, and, you know, uh, it's looking to me like we want to be short. And, and you know, it, it might bip up here, give you a fill, but I would be shorting that. So let me ask the question on this chart right here, 6J, this is, we, we are, this is live data, but we're going to trade it in SIM. Everybody knows that, right? I don't take live trades in the Asian session, so we'll do it in SIM, but we'll do it together as a team. How many of you want to be shorting this chart? Type in an S, and how many of you want to be getting long on a break here? S for short, L for long. Now keep in mind, in the Asian session, which is just getting kicked off here at 5 o'clock Pacific time, it's very much like our, um, our uh, 6.30 a.m. Pacific equity open time. Okay, I'm just going to lob that out there for you in your, in your thought process. This is like their open time, okay? And what do we know it opens in the first hour? Can go either way. That's right. Can go either way. Interesting. We get an interesting mix of short and long calls here. Uh, let's see, David. Let's count the shorts. One, two, three, four, five. Five shorts. Pervez, Adam, and uh, Dennis. So one, two, three, four, five, six longs. So it's about tied. Interesting, interesting, interesting. All right. Well, let's do this. If it rolls over, let me let me lob this out here. What if it rolled over and broke back down through here? Was anybody want to short this? If it pops down through the mid band to the downside. So in this configuration here. We are saying to ourselves, if we break up, we want to be long. 
and we would take two, the scalper target would be here, and then we'll trail the stop up to here. If, on the other hand, the market rolls over and continues on down and breaks the mid-band that we want to be short, and we have a couple of targets down here. We said earlier that it was before we opened the room here that this mid-band box had set up and quite possibly you could be long already out of this box and you could flip it right here if it broke. In that case, box at no bias, Michael. Jacobo likes the short. Adam is saying, I'm looking at the, the medium swing over around 7 o'clock that never got taken out. 7 o'clock. Are you saying way over here? Uh, Adam, you almost got a kind of a triple bottom right in this uh, area here, just under the 85300. You could make the case you're right that it hit it here three times. Once there at 7 and then most recently over here. So notice what we're doing here is what is the first things we're doing? I know I threw, I threw trades on the chart just so we, we don't miss anything if it pops. But take a look at the chart. What do we do? which is something we should do every time we get ready to start trading a morning session. What's the first thing we got to do, right? Put the lines on the chart. That's right, Mindy. Draw your lines, support and resistance. Very critical. I know we do that in the live room. Gary's very good at that. He is the line king. And so, uh, so that's what we're doing. Most excellent. You know, you could make the case that the bulk of the day, uh, you know, 6J has been in a big old range, right? I mean, even though the background is red, the background was green over here, so you were looking for longs. And then it chopped around, and it's been in a pretty tight range all day, so I don't, I don't know if we're going to actually get anything. Let's take a look at what else might be moving here. Gold. Uh, anybody watching the gold chart? Let me tuck this in the corner so we can keep an eye on it. Our little 6J set up here. We'll see if we get any kind of fills on it. Stand by for a minute, please. I've got to shuffle things on the deck here for a second. Give me one second, please. And I will get that going for you. Get the gold chart down here in front of you. 6J is still kind of sitting there. Nothing going on. All right, here's gold. Uh... Uh, uh, okay. All right. Now, anybody want to be short in gold up here? Everybody see the gold chart? Let me give you a couple options for you to consider on a gold short. So let's go back a little further on the chart into earlier in the morning. You can see we had a little bit of an uptrend here. Shorts on gold, Dennis. You like that? Okay. So we had a little bit of a pop. You know, gold has been in a big downtrend ever since the markets have been going up. Everybody knows that, right? We're, we're at like monthly, multi-monthly lows on, on gold. So the trend overall, if you looked at a 14, 40-minute chart, has been down. But it's been punctuated throughout the course of intraday trading with these occasional spikes up, like you see over here at the equity open this morning on gold. Yellow pop up here, right? And then it started to go back into its little descent here. And actually, let's get a couple lines on the chart here. You can make the case that this little support area here has been holding all morning. Now, if it does not pop the mid-band, bar close short, I was just going to do that. A way you can emulate that with with uh, with uh, with sim. Let me double check we're in sim here. Sim, good. Okay, we're good. A, a way to emulate that. I don't have OT up here. I apologies. I didn't have a chance to put it up. Uh, you can see that the bar would close down through here. So either way, we're looking for shorts. Yeah. So the overall trend is is uh, is down for now. Uh, with Clearly, if we roll a bar close and break this little shelf here, we would want to get short, and our target would be here. Now, it's quite possible in the after-hours session that it could pop. 
up through uh, the mid band and fill us short. So that that is a danger there, right? Uh, that we need to be comfortable with. Let me get this put this down here real quick. Right, and I think that's one of the fears that you were talking about, right, Pervez? Is you 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 uh, you get in late with a box, or you hesitate with a box, and you know, next thing you know, uh, things are going sideways on you. Yeah, you know, I mean, so this is we're we're, we're actually looking at real time in in an actual trade off. I mean, it, 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 if you were going to do a box at the mid band, let me just put it this way. Let me let me come at it from a different angle. The bar close open would be uh, this this one. The entry would be this one right here. And who said who said to turn bar close on, Michael? So in other words, if we close down, it would fill us short. And you know what? I want to do too, so we can get at least a scalper on. Oops, wrong way. If you had if you had uh, OT running on your chart right now, you would simply activate bar close. Okay, and it would all set up your targets and your stops and manage it all for yourself. I'm trying to keep it simple because we're going to go through a lot of a lot of charts tradings tonight. So you wouldn't necessarily have this entry right here because what you might do is you might make the case, well, you know, I wanted Charles, I want to see what I, I want to I wanted to get up, you know, on or above that mid band, and then I want to decide whether I want to do a box or not. So you may or may not actually have. Everybody see what I'm saying? You wouldn't necessarily short a BIP up here, although it's hit it twice and rolled. You might want to wait till it gets up into here and actually draw a box itself. And Pervez, if you're you're dealing with that, the other the key, you know, crude oil is. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to circle back to the drum I've beaten for seven years now. Instrument selection is key. You can't just go in and watch other people trading gold or crude oil or whatever. And, and it, you know, if you don't have experience with it, and you're not, and you're not accustomed to the price action it has, it can kick your butt, right? We can't just assume that everybody's going to go in and start trading crude oil and making money. That might not be the right instrument for you. You know, if the mid-band boxes are not clean, and you're getting faked into trades and, and sucked into counter trend things or whatever, and it's stopping you out, you might have to switch and try another instrument. That might be the case there, Pervez, by the way. And, and that's true of anybody in here tonight. Uh, instrument selection is absolutely critical and key. All right, so we've got um, we've got some gold uh, uh, orders in here. We've got some 6J. Let's take a look at the Swissy 6S. That sometimes also moves in the aftermarket uh, Asian session here, after hours market. Scrunch our little 6J down here so we can keep an eye on it. We've got our gold set up here. I'm not going to put a second order short here simply because if we get filled on the one and we go a little higher, uh, you know, it could it could it could all conceivably get all the way back up into here. And so I might have to do a little bit of sort of dollar cost averaging and put another order up here when it rolled to get filled two. In other words, I'm not going to put, I want to have two on short no matter what it does. But in the case of the BIP up here, it could go further and we'd be upside down for a little while, right? If it went all the way up here or higher. In which case I would want to reshort it and blend the average above the mid band. So I'm not going to just short two on a, on a pop and a roll there. But if it closed down, yes, I do want to have two on. Everybody following that? All right, let's scrunch our little gold chart down here and get uh, see if anything else is moving. Anybody else scanning the market for trade opportunities? Pull up a chart. Here's the Swissy 6S. Sometimes that moves in the Asian session as well. Let's take a look at if we have any setups here. Ooh. Hmm. Let's take a poll of the team here tonight. What do you think of the Swissy chart? Any Swissy takers? Anybody see a, a trade on this chart? If you do, type it in. T 
type it in. Roll over at stealth. Well, let's take a look here. Um, you know, if you were going to put some uh, some lines on this chart, clearly you'd have a line up here, and you could possibly put another one right in here. And clearly you have support down here. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, it looks like a pretty tight range to me. 6E is moving, Dennis. I don't see anything on this chart. I, I personally don't like patterns like this. See how it's whippy and all going all over the place, spiking up and rolling down, coming down, checking the support, hanging around here. Uh, I would, I would, you know, ixnay this chart right away. As soon as I see it looks like that, I'd move on to something else. That's that's for me personally. If you like ranges like that, by all means, by all means, trade it. All right. 6C is in an uptrend. We're looking to buy here, huh? I want to be a buyer of 6E. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at this support down here. Give me some long trades on 6E. Anybody with me? I'm a buyer. Yep, trend is up. Give me some 6E. Long, long, long. Let's get up. Anybody, let's put a market buy in order right now. Anybody with me? Buy, buy, buy some 6E. <laughs> of course, if we're looking at 6E, what else do we got to look at? Let's double check we're in SIM here. There we go. All right. If we're looking at 6E, what else should we be looking at? Anybody? What's the 6E friendy we should be checking out? Best friend of the 6E. I'm messing with everybody. You're saying no way. I don't see it. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, I'm just messing with you a little bit, making sure everybody's still awake. Take your shot of espresso. We all got to wake up here. Yeah, trend is down. Trend is down on 6E. We're looking for shorts. Yeah, we're shorting 6E, and we're buying the dollar. Because those two run opposite of each other. They're mirror images of each other, right? All right, so um, it looks to me that it's coming up. We could do something similar that we did on the gold chart. We could look for a BIP up to here. Now, I'm only going to put one on with a uh, sell order up here. And how many of you want to do a rollover bar here? So in that way, it would be somewhat similar to the gold setup. Now, dollar, you could do something similar to this, right? You could do a buy order here. Let me put some buy orders on the dollar chart. We could take a little vote here. We're getting long. We're getting long dollar. Yeah, normally 6E has quite a few. Uh, if you go to the cmegroup.com, uh, 6E has, has op it's not unusual to see two or three times the volume on, uh, on, uh, on 6E. Okay, we just got filled short gold. That would be a bar close up trade long on uh, dollar. Okay, we're short gold one lot. It's coming right up to the to the mid band here, it, and it is trying to roll. So let's keep an eye on what she does. Six J has got a whole lot of nowhere. It's just sitting there in between its little box right there. Dollar, we're looking to buy. If we come down, let me put some other buy orders on here and see see what the what the team thinks about this tonight. Buy limit, buy limit. I'll do something similar over here on 6E. Sell limit and a sell limit.
gold's trying to roll over. Let's push it over a little bit. All right, so let's take a vote on these um, on these uh, potential uh, uh, trade entries on on the dollar and six e. We'll call the ones that are closest to the price A. So A would be this one here, just under the midband. A six e would be just above the midband, right here. So we'll call those closest to the price A, and we're going to vote on which ones you want. B here would be just under the midband. Here would be just above the midband. That would be the B trades on six e and um, and C would be here. C would be the outermost trades. Now. Quick question on here. Let's circle back to gold while you're pondering the A, C, A, B, C trades on, on, uh, on these two. Um, do we want to add to gold if it breaks down? In other words, should we hold the one short and just manage that one? Uh, that would be, uh, let's call that yes. No, let's call yes to leave this on and no and to take it off. Yes to leave it, no to take it off. So if you vote yes, what would happen here is that if it breaks through that swing, you'll be short three. And the blended average would be somewhere between these two levels, short three. No would be to just leave one lot on and just manage the one lot. And let me give you a third option, and you can type in one for this. We don't short two there. We go ahead and we'll take one more on a break. That would be typing in a one. So that would be making that one. So we would have it would short one more on a break, and we'd be short two total. So it's yes, leave it. No, take it off. And one would be reducing it from two to one. Oh, we got a lot of ones. We got a lot of yeses coming in. Yes and a one. Leave it to be short two if it rolls. Okay, that seems to be the consensus of the team. Yes, leave and reduce the additional contract from two to one. Okay, good. Good deal. All right, we'll leave that on uh, our little gold chart here that we'll keep an eye on. 6J still not just sitting there, not going anywhere. Up a couple of ticks on our gold short. Wicked right up to shy of the mid-band. Fill this. Now let's go back to our 6E vote and the dollar vote here. Now, by the way, here's another thing, too. If you trade 6E and you trade the dollar, and I've said this many, many times, sometimes one moves ahead of the other, right? So it's, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see... Um, 60 roll over and pop through here, and the dollar might just kind of dink around here a little bit, and then and then you know sometime within a minute or so it would follow it up. We can watch that together if that happens. By the way, on the ABC vote, you have multiple options. You can pick one of these entries, A, B, or C. In this case over here, it would be A, B, or C. Or you could put in A, B, or you can have put in A, B, C. In other words, you want all three to fill if it went down here or went up there. So we're voting on the 6E and dollar in, uh, DX dollar index potential trade entries. As you're looking at this, of course, I see some people have just come in. The dollar is in an uptrend. You can see it's very methodically been putting in fresh swings here, pulling back. It's been fairly powerful in the fact that you can see that we only break the stealth and we don't quite get the mid-band on these pullbacks. So that's why we have the bar close order in up here in the event that it holds this and it pops up this way. Uh, Core 6E is in the mirror image condition. It's been putting in a series of lower high swings. One, two, come back up. This one, this has actually been coming closer to the mid-band. These trades were all set up short, right? on these rollovers. Short here. That would have been a couple hours ago. And then of course you see short here. Both of those were profitable trades. And so now we're retracing again. Now, if you had OT on this chart, yeah, sure, you could, and unfortunately I don't have it. I just, I got in late. I got in here like 
two minutes before. My apologies, I was stuck in some traffic there. But if I had more time, I could load OT on all these charts, and, and we can work with that. But for now, let's just work with the limit orders. Yeah, so what I'm saying, just to be clear, is you could take object trader region box, draw it like this, and then activate the short side only. Likewise, over here in, in uh, bar close or region box on the dollar, you essentially do the same thing, right? You would take a region box, engulf it like this, enabling longs only. All right, good. So we've got four charts, uh, one, two, three, four charts all set up here. 6J, no trade. Gold kind of dinking around the mid-band underneath of it right now. We're in it but we're not filled, and then we're waiting for 60 in the dollar to make a move. All right, so what I want to do is I want to get another chart done here and talk about crude oil. How many of you trade crude? Just show of hands from the team tonight. How many of you are crude oil traders? How many of you come into, uh, into the live room with Gary at the pit open and trade it with him? Any crude traders in here? Just show of hands. Uh, quite a few yeses, okay. 6B do two. I don't think I have 6B up here. Are you, are, are you watching 6B, uh, Joe, okay? Is 6B moving? Provez is asking if, if gold goes up. I, I, that's a good question. That's a good question. I have that line up there. And we're, we might face that condition. Remember when we first came in here, I drew a line up at that resistance. I said it could go higher. And that was the risk of putting this sell order in here. In other words, uh, it's still you could make the case that it is still in retrace mode. Notice we didn't get a bar closed down. And it's actually coming into an area that you probably would be boxing now. All right, stand by. Let's get a crude oil chart up here. Yeah, so gold's moving against us. So now let's let's open this up and discuss this a little bit. Since we were uh, uh, we we talked about the fact that this is probably not a trade you would want to do for this reason that you see right here, right? Is as it's still going in its retracement mode up, we don't. It has not rolled over yet, right? It has not rolled over yet, and the rollover is normally what triggers the trade itself. So we really don't want to put. So now you have two choices. We have another swing, more or less, kind of up in this area here. We can add to it. We can sell one more contract up here if it comes up here. So we would. Oh no, no, I don't want to. So, so, what are you doing there? Don't do that. Okay, it's going to come up to it. Now, the other option would be, hey, we did a dumb thing. Don't. Oh. <laughs> I was going to take a vote. It's too late. <laughs> now, I want. Now, I do want to watch this in real time. I do want to watch this a little bit in real time because there's a lesson to be learned here, and this is really good. This is really good. Okay, and I think this is going to address some of the concerns that were voiced earlier about getting into trades too early. Now, notice what's happened here. Okay, I'm going to take this trade off so I don't want to be confusing. And I'm going to take this off too because that didn't happen. Notice that a bar has not rolled over yet. Each one of these bars is closing what? Up. Right? So the momentum of the retracement is still in what direction? It is retracing. We all see it. We know we wanted to short it. What direction are we still going here on this on this retracement? Every single bar has closed up. So everybody, I, I, it, 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 with the momentum still going up and you don't have a closed down bar yet, was it a good idea to put an order in here right now? No. No, it definitely wasn't, and we see that. So for all we know, this bar could keep going like this 
and this and this and come all the way up. It could go all the way up. And you're feeling that pain all the way. All right, so the prudent thing to do in situations like this is to either use the line or the ray tool. If I had Object Trader up, I would do it. Or box it for a rollover or do a bar close entry to allow the market. So, so in other words, what I'm saying is in this scenario here, as, as the market continued to go up, you would not be feeling any heat. You're waiting for the market to hit resistance and roll over and break something. A line, a ray, a box, anything. Right? Like that. So that's a good lesson. I'm glad this happened. All right, now what's, what's going on over here? What's going on over here? I think we're getting some movement on 60 in the dollar. Let's open these charts up and see what I think we've been filled on something here. And we'll just let gold, we'll just sort of keep an eye on gold right here, okay? All right. Let's open up and take a look at what's going on with 6E here. We were filled. We were filled on 6E short. Let me get the position thing up here. I'll tuck it in the corner. By the way, this is how I do it too when I'm live. Uh, and you want to change this to currency. Everybody knows how to do that, right? Chart Trader Properties, you come in here and you set it to currency instead of ticks. Where is it? P&L display per unit, you want it to be currency and set that to default. Everybody knows how to do that, right? There we go. So it filled this one. It filled the A. For those of you that vi voted A, all right, so that's my question. That's my question to the team. Let's take another yes, no vote from the team here right now. Um, let me get this stuff out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. And first of all, let me get this down here so we can track the p &L together. This is how I do it. On my main screen, you're looking at screen one. I have four screens. I keep my open price tab and my P&L right here, like this, tucked in the corner, right there like that. And my other charts are all around it like this. Let's get this noise off of here so we can track what's going on. All right. Now the question is, and we got to answer this pretty quick, do we want to add to 6E, excuse me, if it breaks, Yes or no? It's about to break it. And do we want to do like we did with gold? Do we want to take that down to one? Yes or no? Type in a Y or an N. And up here, we likewise situation. Add one on a pop. Yes or no? Type in a yes or no. we got to get a vote quick. 6E's is coming right to it. Leave this trade on to add one more contract short if it breaks this swing right here. Leave this contract on to buy one more on a breakup on the dollar, yes or no. Please cast your votes. You have 10 seconds. Yes or no. Whatever the team votes, that's what we'll do. Cast your vote. Yes, add to 6E. Yes, add to the dollar. No. No would be a vote to leave one lot on, and we'll just manage the one lot. Boom. Too late. Now look what's happening here. Okay, this is what I was telling you. Let's see. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, there's only one no. Okay. All right. The team voted yes. All right. All right. So we're short two on the dollar, not or on the um, short two on um, uh, six E. Now look at this. I told you one moves. Okay. Now here's where you circle back. We're not going to leave these on any longer, right? We're going to start to manage the trade now. This never got down to here. That's off the table. 6E has rolled and has broken its swing, but look at where the dollar is stuck. Dollar's not followed it just yet. Now, you can, sometimes in the, in, after our sessions, you'll get a little divergence like that. But if 6E continues to break like this, then what should the dollar do? 6E continues on down 
and breaks these supports and comes down into this area down here by the swing, what should six e or the, what should the dollar do? Go up, right? So that's what happens with these two sometimes. One leads the other. Not all the time, but sometimes. Now gold did roll here. We did get a downturn bar. Did you see that? See the dollar perking up? Dollar should take this out. Follow 6E. I'm going to get a breakdown here. Let's get some of this, this noisy noise off of here. Uh, drawing objects, remove all drawing objects. Let's get all that off of there. It's just confusing. But I do want to put a couple of things back on here. Let's open this chart up and get a little bit more here. All right, we're kind of up in no man's land a little bit here. We did break the swing. I'm going to put a line right here. The swing had held at the mid man while we were in this trading in that lower range down there. And now we're short. So one thing we definitely do not want to do is add any more to it. Okay? When, when you're in a situation like this where it's broken a swing, it's gone a little bit higher. We have a blended average right here short at 3180. We do not want to put more risk on here. I would never advocate adding more contracts short up here. Because you can really you get into a hope trade, like you, would, you wouldn't want to say, oh, well, you know, if it goes a little higher, I'm going to blend my average up into here. That's, I, I'd never do that, okay? If it does what it's doing right here and it gets a little bit upside down and you're expecting a roll and it's a strong trend to the downside, yeah, you can do a quick little blend, blended average of a couple of ticks here. And in reality, you know, it's, you could make the case even though you have a bar closed down that it's still, still kind of retracing here like that. You know, in which case you could box it here and then uh, would be another way to do it right now. Just take your region box as it's still dinking around here and you would look for a close down through here, short, like this. So it's forming the box that we should have waited for. Uh, would you box CL to either add short or get out if it goes up? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here. Are you are you talking about uh, the the gold chart, uh, Pervez? Yeah. So I would be looking to get out of the trade if it broke up here. Yeah. So I'd be putting. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's put our protective stops in. Let's see. We're short, so we have to buy it back, right? We're short. We have to buy it back. So that's what I'm saying. Just to be clear. Yeah. I'd be I'd be I'd be stopping out if it goes way up here, takes us out and goes up. We're out. We're out of that trade. Right? You just got to get out of it. Yeah, you got to get out of it. You can't just keep, get into a hope trade and keep leveraging yourself up, putting more risk on as it runs against you, and then it never rolls and it creams you. You take, you know, something the kid lost 50 or 100 bucks and you lose 200 or more. We don't, homie doesn't play that game. We don't do that, okay? That's not good risk management. Let's see what gold does here. All right, 60 is starting to move a little bit more in our favor. Notice how not the dollar is trying to close up through this swing. If 6E takes out this um, line uh, th uh, 3 here at 4820, there's no question the dollar would pop and fill us that second contract. Now, we got to get some targets and stops here. Uh, okay, no, that's Perez's question. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't clear on that. Okay, his question is, should we add another contract on a break here? As if it was a close below the box. Any takers on that, yes or no? Ten seconds on the clock for your vote. Yes or no, add another contract to gold if it breaks the mid-man. Might pop it. You got to let us know real quick. Yes or no? Cast your vote, 10 seconds, on gold. Add this, yes or no. This short on a close down. Hurry up. It's coming to it. Oh, Pervez, we're getting a lot of no's, buddy. Counting them real quick. 
Okay, one, two yeses, one, two, three, three yeses. Uh, counting no's, one, two, three, four no's. Uh, my buddy, unfortunately the no's have it. The team has vote not to add that. Now you could, okay, you could do that. Now you got to realize that you're leveraging up your risk. Each time you add a contract, um, you would have to take this and put this your stop up here. There, now you would be filled. Uh, CG, okay, there was another jo uh, another vote no. Okay, so there was five no's and three yeses. If you did leverage up, you'd have another uh, you'd have another contract on here right now. If you had a box trade on, you'd be getting into it right now. Uh, trend is down. You might have come in late there, CG. So uh, when we analyze the chart, uh, 6E, the trend is down. So we basically shorted a roll off the mid band here. We had an order sitting up here. And it came up and rolled. Likewise, you can see the trend on the dollar is up. So we bought support. When it wicked down in the mid band, we got filled. And there was a consensus to add another contract on a breakup on dollar. So if it takes this swing out, we'll have two lot with a blended average somewhere in here, long. Okay, now we got to start managing these trades that we're in. Um, so we got to get some targets and stops in. Now, how many of you want to vote to take the gold stop down to here? Yes or no? Tighten the gold stop right now. By the way, each of these, since, since these markets are starting to move a little bit here, I'm only going to give 10 seconds to cast the vote. So you have to cast, you have to put your opinion in very quickly. Yes or no, tighten the gold stops right now. Cast your votes. And whatever the prevailing team vote is, that is what we will do. Tighten them. Yes, across the board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ooh, Perez wants to go to break even. I don't know about that, buddy. I'll tell you what. I, in my personal view, it's trying to it's trying to wiggle around here a little bit. And, um, and, and technically, in terms of the OT, that bar did not close, so you would not be in. If you had the third sell order under there, yeah, you'd be in it on a limit order. But if you took this thing to break even, you know, I, I let, let me let me put it this way. Here's how I here's how I look at this. If it comes up and wiggles around inside the box again, um, it could wick up to here and roll and take us out and then give us the trade we want. So you know, if you put it in here, I personally think that's a little too tight. Now, that being said. If it takes the swing out like this and starts to get down into here, yeah, absolutely. In fact, so let's go ahead and get our targets on here. We have a couple of choices. So if gold, clearly I, I would think the scalper uh, short cover would be to buy some back. Let me put a configuration in to buy. That would be a tight scalper, in my opinion, that little shelf right there. Looser scalper would be here. And then clearly there is some support down here. You could fade this. For the bottom of the trading range, or put in a runner. Like that. A, starting on this little ladder here of buybacks, we have to pick two of the four as a team. A would be here, B would be here, C would be here, and D is the runner. So let's type in your letters. I'll give you 15 seconds on your buy to cover targets, and whatever the consensus of the team is, that's what we will put in. Here again, you, you, can you have to type in two letters, A, B, C, D. Buy to cover targets on gold. Let's look at the overall chart here. You can see there's a swing down here. Clearly there was support here. There was a little shelf there. 
This is obviously the tight. A is the tight. I see a lot of letters coming in here. Let me, I might have to jot this one down. Let's see, we're counting the letters. Get a piece of paper and a pen real quick out here. And we'll see what the team wants to do with the buy to cover targets. On gold. All right, I'm counting A's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten A's. Okay? Counting B's. One, two from Adam, three Pervez, four B's. Counting C's. Uh, Peter, one, Michael, two, three, Tom, four Pervez, five. All right, it's either just like four or five C's. Any D's? Jacobo. <laughs> Pervez, you typed in four letters. You have to pick two. <laughs> we don't have four lot on. We don't have four on, right? All right, so ten A's, the A have it. The A's have it. Okay, so A stays. Oop, it just filled it. All right, here's what we're going to do. Let's clean this nonsense out of here. All right, so here's what it's, D is off the table. There's only one vote for D, so that's out. So the question now is, we, okay, we're down to one lot. Uh, it's moving in our favor. So what do we do with our stops? That's right, we want a free trade. Those of you who have been in here trading with me in this Asian session before know what that is. We get that puppy down real nice. Now we got a free trade on. Now we leave B or C. Well, B, it was kind of a tide. As I recall, there was four or five Bs and four or five Cs here, so it's kind of tied. Um, let's leave the B on just for now, okay? And here's what we can always do. If it starts to move precipitously in this direction and we want to take a little bit more out of it and we think we're going to get the C, we can always move it down and then move our, you know, you've seen me do this many, many times, right? You move this down, and you move the, you know, you you just sort of, if it starts to zigzag on down there, we'll just start to follow it with the trail and the stop, trail and the stop, trail and the stop, until it nails one or the other. Okay, good. Let's go back over here. We only got one off of gold. Got a free trade on gold. No 6J, nothing, just sitting there. We've got to manage our 6E and dollar trades. over here. We might get taken out of gold. Anybody want to loosen the gold a little bit right there like that? Give it some wiggle room. There we go. Anybody want to move gold above here, the entry, or you want to keep the free trade on? Free trade would uh, or um, uh, would be to put it above here. We already nailed this target, so we only got one on. No, leave it. Free trade. Okay. Interesting. We still haven't been filled on that dollar long. Adding to here. I mean, the other thing you could do. Well, we can't. We you know we we have to wait. It should pop it. Now we have two on here at a swing on six e. We could take um, the scalper off here and put a stop at break even on 6E. And we don't have to add to the dollar here. We can just take this off and just manage the one lot. Type in your thoughts there, if you will. So let me be clear what I'm saying here. So I'm saying buy to cover on the short for 6E, maybe perhaps here. And then you're going to want to fade down here for your second buy to I wouldn't go, this is a pretty strong support level. I don't think I'd go for a runner on 6E, simply because it's been down here three times, and this area is held every time. So when that happens, when it comes down here, we're expecting a bounce, right? That's what we're saying. When it comes down, if and when it was to come down here again, a lot of people say, well, you know, what's, what do you think is going to happen? Is it just going to break it and tank? Well, you know, most likely what's going to happen is it would come down here and bounce at least up and then roll again. It's 
take a vote on the dollar over here. Anybody still want to add this? Hasn't taken it out. Yes or no, add it or take it off. Yes is a vote to leave the order to add to the dollar. A no vote means take it off and just manage the one lot. Ten seconds. Cast your votes on the dollar. Yes, leave the order there. No, take the order down. Mm, a lot of no's coming in. Nobody wants to add to the dollar there. Okay, the prevailing vote is no. All right, dollar bill you. In fact, I'll tell you what I'd, I would do for me personally. I would put a tight stop on it right now like this. I wouldn't let it go negative. We're long, so we're selling. I'd keep a tight stop there like that. So you maybe you lose a tick, and then if it bipped up here for a quick pop, I would I would take a I would I would take a scalp just right there, just take it right off. Yeah, I mean because what could happen conceivably it would pop up, fill you in a second lot, roll over and do what the six E is doing here. We probably should have had our scalper here tighter. That's why I said if you recall, go back in the recording if you missed it. I said, do you want to cover? half of your 6E right here with a market buy on one lot right here. Remember it was sitting there? I said, do you want to buy one back here? Okay, now it's moving against us. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do this. Here's how, here's how, and the problem is, is that it's 1250 on uh, your, your short two, so you're really out of balance, right? You're out of balance here. I wouldn't let the dollar go against this. I'd actually do that right there. So at least we get something out of the trade. Now, how many of you want to put the stops right here above the mid-man? We're short. We have to buy it back. You want to let it go all the way up into here? T, T for tight is here. L for loose is up here. Ten seconds, your vote on the stops. Six E stops you're voting on. T for tight. It bips up through the mid band, you're out. Looser, you want to let it go a little wiggle room up here. Let it go against you. Dollar, we got a free trade on. That thing bips into here, we're out. If it pops up here, we get the scalper. See it? Boom, we're out of the dollar. Tight, T, T, T. One, two, three, four, five, six T's. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so that's how you manage on the fly, right? That's how we manage that on the fly. Do you see what we did? We made a quick decision on the dollar because what happened was that the uh, 6E held this swing and is now moving against us. The dollar did not break that. Remember, we were going to add to it. So what was 6E telling us? 6E was telling us the dollar was going to flip and come back down here. So we immediately took our stop up to above break even and, and nudged out a couple of ticks here to cover some of the losses we're going to get here if it pops through there. And I would never, ever put a loose stop way up here like this. I mean, you'd be better off here's taking your lump on this, covering with part of what you made on the dollar, and then if it comes up into here, then look for a reshort. So sometimes you have to adjust on the fly, right? You have to adjust on the fly. You would, what I'm saying is explicitly, to be clear, I would not put the stops loose up here on this particular move. I'd just go ahead and take the hit. And then if it came up here, we don't know that it would, but if it did, then come up and look for a re-entry short up here. All right, gold might get us. Gold's dinking around just under the mid-band. It did not break that swing. Let's go ahead and we got one lot left on. Let's box it like that. 6J is not moving. We're getting a little long in the tooth. I'm going to take those uh, those uh, off the table. We don't want to get in 6J. It went, no, it went nowhere. That's gone. Managing gold here. We've got a very tight scalper down here. If we bip down on the, this candle one more time, we're going to get out. It's in a tight little box. It's either going to get the stop or this. We're out of the dollar, so we'll take that, that order off. Always remember to circle back and check your orders. Got a tight little box on gold here. It's going to pop our little quick target. I could go a little bit looser if you wanted, like that. 
that bar closed down, it would take it out. How many of you want to tighten this up on gold? Let's get this box out of here. It doesn't really have any meaning anymore. Let's do this. Let's do this. The wick of the candle. Whatever direction that candle goes, you're out either way. Either way, you make money on it, right? Mid-band is holding. So what we're going to be watching over here on the dollar to help our 6E trade is the fact that uh, for now, we're holding a mid-band there, and we're holding this right here. So it could, it could wick us and get us out, or she's going to roll off a resistance. Oops. I would do this too. I would do, I would just if it bips down into here, I would just take a couple of ticks off of it. See that? So either we're going to get a quick stop on a close above the mid band, or we're going to give a couple of ticks if it rolls through our entry and gives us a tight, tight stop. Yeah, that's really it's slow, Joe. Joe K. Yeah, it is very slow. Um, you know, at least we got a couple of trades on here to to play around with together. Now, you see why I do this in, in Sim? You don't really want to be putting a lot of risk on. There's not a lot of volume on these trades. There was probably, it, with live money, there'd be some slippage in there. Uh, dollars popping up. Should mean that 6E is going to roll. What you going to do? 6E obilio. Got a few more minutes. We'll watch the end of these trades here. By the way, any final questions? Let's circle back. Pervez did have questions on uh, oil from earlier this morning. Let's pop up and get ourselves a crude chart up. Stand by. Now, Pervez, your questions were uh, mainly at the uh, at the pit open. Nine a.m. What, what time zone are you in there? Are you back east? Is that six a.m. Pacific? Oh, you're East Coast. Okay. All right, let's get gold up here. Oop, got a gold. All right, let's get that trade off. We don't want to be in that. Stopped out. Stopped out of 6E. Trades are done. Okay, that was fun. Huh. That was good. I always like to get a couple of trades off at night like that. All righty then. Okay. All right, quick quiz before we do some early market analysis on oil. Was there a trade that just set up here on oil? We should have been watching oil tonight, huh? Was there a trade that set up on oil? Yes or no within the last hour or two? Look at the chart, right-hand side, over here. Maybe we should short it right now. What do you think? Market short? Let's go ahead. Let's short it right now. What do you think? Anybody? Short it? It's going down. It's going to break. Let's get in right now. Here you go. Sell market. Anybody with me? <laughs> you guys are fun. You have guys and gals in here. Yeah, load it up. <laughs> it's too late to short it. Hey, Hardy, I didn't see you sneak in there. I, I didn't see it earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. No, no you're not going to short it. The trade already set up. It was up here. And, uh, of course, you can see that if you had a um, some lines on your chart, there was a support area here. Swing came right up to the mid-band. The roll, the short roll entry was up here so it you know and this we, we teach this all the time okay if if you see that a trade has already came and went and now you, the, the traders who caught the short here on the mid band roll are already in it excuse me and what are they doing they're covering the scalper right here 
They've already taken the trade, and they're already out a part of their. Tra they're already out a part of their trade. They, uh, the, the traders who took the ro midman role, have taken the scalp off the table, and they're already in a free trade with their stops here. Right? Everybody see that? So that's why I asked the question: Do you want to short it here? Of course, you don't want to short it here. You have to wait for a retracement. The trade already came and went. So let's go back here and look at the morning. So um, six o'clock clock uh, crude pit uh, 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 open was right here. Approximately. So at the pit open there on oil, what were you wanting to do? What type of trade set up right at six o'clock? In fact, I think Gary gets in there like five or ten minutes before before that opens. So what were you looking to do? Six o'clock right here. Actually, six is six is over here. Five fifty-five is here. The story open. He opened the room right here. So when Gary opened the room, what did he want to do? What was Gary doing at the pit open? I wasn't in there, so I don't know. He's looking to buy it to get long, or he could have had a no bias on it, right? I mean, you could have approached it in a couple of different ways. You could have you could have boxed it right here, or at six o'clock you could have you could have had a much larger box and it could have looked more like this. This is borderline bad box. It's right on the edge. Looks to be about maybe twelve between yeah tw ten to twelve ticks. You could have still boxed it here. If you had the smaller box, you would have been filled long on this bar right here. If you had the larger box, you would have been filled long on this bar right here. Either way, you're long. However you look at it, you're, you're long in here off of this bounce at the mid-band. This was a trend change, a trend reversal. It went up, went up, went up all the way to here in the first 15, 20 minutes after the pit opened. I came in shortly after, I, I get in the room about 6.20, 6.25 before the equity markets, markets open. And as I recall, I boxed it in here and I didn't get in until up here. I got long here on this pullback. Because I missed this. I missed this leg of it. But it was so strong, I didn't think it was going to come back to the mid-band. So I boxed it and I got filled long on one of these bars right here. So I caught this I caught this last leg up here. Now, by the time you got over here at 8 o'clock, it started getting really choppy. You see that, everybody? Buying into resistance? No, no, I'm, I'm buying this pullback here, David. This this pullback. See how it sat here? It sat here for about 10 minutes. This didn't. These bars didn't go fast. No, it was slow. It just sat here like this. Well, I was prepared to get long here because if it, I had a tight stop. I had an extremely tight stop on it. If this if this turned out to be a head fake in here, then I was prepared to dump it if it, it broke the bottom right here. So my risk was fairly low. And if that happened, it came back down. I would I would rebuy it at the mid band. So the risk was low. I knew it was at least going to probably pop to there. Let me get this out of the way here. Let me get this stupid line out of the way. Hold on. So it popped up, it catched that, caught that swing, pulled back, wicked down to the entry. So you had another chance to get in right here, right there. There was another chance to get in it. And then it broke up, and you had a beautiful trade that never looked back. Now, where you got into trouble on crude, so you had you had two long trades from the pit open all the way over here till about eight o'clock. I think I stopped out of that long all the way up here somewhere. I know Gary and I were tracking it. Remember, we were talking about stops. I think the stop was at oh oh uh, right under ten at oh seven or something. Remember, anybody remember that in the room? We were talking about where to put our stops. I think on the close below seven, we got out as, as I recall. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, David, if you, commenting on this early box at the pit open, you know, you might have not caught you, you you might not have caught that trade. Yeah, I don't know if he caught it in the room or not. I wasn't there, but you definitely had a chance to get in on that pullback right there. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before. You know, when when the when it gets below stealth, and it's and it's in between there and the and the uh, and the mid band 
on a powerful trend up or down, you got to look at a window of where you're going to get in. It doesn't always, you can't, and this is really hard to break. I know this is a hard, hard habit to break for everybody. I understand that. Everybody wants a trade to come back to the mid-band, sit there with a beautiful, perfect box, and then you, you box it in and it goes in the direction you want. But it doesn't always work like that. Okay, we have to be prepared for other scenarios. We have to say to ourselves, in a strong trend, it might only get to here. And if it gives you an opportunity to get in, then you take it and you have a tight stop on it. And if it comes back and goes deeper, well, then you get out of it and you look to re-enter. Sometimes it does. I mean, sure. My, you know, I love a good mid-band box. Everybody knows that. I like to sit right there, tight little consolidation, and boom, take off again. That's the ideal. And I know a lot of traders don't like the fact when it gets below the mid-band down into here. I understand that. Now, where you got into trouble is after we stopped out of this nice long trade here, right here, we got stopped out on the close below 07, it went all the way down into here and then went sideways for, for like two, three hours. All right? How and why might you have avoided that? This chop right here. I think Gary, you know, I'm going back. I'm trying to remember. Gary did buy this bounce, didn't he? Gary bought this bounce. And I came up and he took a scalp here, as I recall, and it went up and it looked like it was at the time, if you cut, if you, if you go back and look at this in real time like this, I did not take that trade. I passed on it. I made good money on this trade right here. That's my point, is by the time it got over here, you could have taken that trade. I know he took it. I don't think he felt any heat on it when it closed up. He got the scalper out. And then, uh, and then we closed the room and we were done trading over here. That was it. Stopped out, came through the mid-band, and then it went totally, totally into chop. Arguably, you had one at the open, two on the pullback, three on the bounce, good trades that all made money. By the time it got to 8.30 in the chop, you, shouldn't, you should have been done trading crude oil and turned it off. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the way you avoid that chop. When you see the chop setting up, you've had three good, this, is, this could have been three and done, plus the equity trades. By the time you got there to 8, 8.30, you should have been out of oil, not trading it anymore. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recorder.